over a year since your last fight, and that was a little controversial since it went to a split decision. Obviously, you didn't plan to be off this long, but looking back on that fight, do you feel like there's anything you could have done different? Yeah, well, I still think that I won that fight, but I've accepted the um, decision. Uh, it was close, so what are you going to do? I uh, I went back after that fight, and I took a little time off, and I kind of healed my body. It was my third fight in four or five months, so I was a little burnt out. I was a little worn out, and I wasn't as motivated as I usually was uh, for a fight, so I kind of switched some things up in, in my training and, and the rest. I mean, I built, I just, I own my own gym. So I was moving locations and I was building a gym and then rushing home to like spend time with my kid and, uh, and then trying to be a professional fighter and do th all of this, like three fights back to back to back. So I kind of just wore myself into the ground and, and I found out that I was doing a thing called redlining too much. So I was, I was running myself training too hard over training every day. And uh, it's hard to bounce back from that. So I kind of hired some new people. I brought some new people on board in my camp and I slowed things down. And during the day, I actually rest <laughs> at night. Sometimes my kids wake me up, I'll be honest, but I'm, I'm still well rested. And um, now I'm, I, I feel great. I'm very confident. And finally, for me, you obviously have gotten more rest since then and trained better since then, but you were expecting to fight in March. The Zach Zane fight has been on the books for a while. So how has the extended camp worked out for you? It's good. I, I trained all through quarantine. So like I said, I own my own gym, so I can basically do whatever I want. So me and uh, another one of my fighters that had a, um, had a, he just recently had a child. I just had my second and uh, we both kind of followed. We stayed away from everyone else and we trained together till things kind of cleared up. So I was, I've been training this whole quarantine, staying sharp and doing this. So while other people were taking time off, getting fat, doing things like that, I wasn't doing any of that. I was, I was preparing. I didn't know it would be for him, but I was preparing for someone and it just happened to be him again. Ben Allen. Hi, Nick. Um, so after ending up on the wrong side of a very close split decision last time, one that you thought that you did enough to win, has that sort of those sort of small margins that can influence the way the judges score a fight? Has that made you even hungrier to take them out of the equation this time and finish the fight? I mean, if you look at my record, I usually always finish the fight. Uh, I think like 16 wins, I have 13 first round wins. So um, if anything, you know, I, I thought I had like a 10-8 first round last time, but the judges didn't. So I'm just going to well, kind of just fight smart and, and technical and good and, and not really worry about um, anything. I'm going to set my traps and, and try to finish. And then when other things present themselves, I'm, I'm going to take them. I'm going to fight like a true professional, calculated, uh, cool, calm, collected. I know Zach's a little uh, spitfire. Uh, of energy and he comes forward and he's very aggressive and I, I kind of like that that kind of feeds into my style so um, I'm very excited for this and uh, like you said before um, you've built up a reputation as a bit of a finisher especially in the grappling department and your opponent Zach he's won 10 of his 14 wins via submission do you think it's inevitable this fight's going to hit the floor uh yeah I think so um most fights do so I think once it hits the ground, you know, I'm, I'm very confident that um, I can stop his takedowns and he can't stop mine. And I've focused a lot. I've had a lot of really high level wrestlers in on this camp. Um, there wasn't really a lot of places to train this quarantine. A lot of places are closed down, especially uh, colleges and stuff like that. So I took the best wrestlers I could find. And I was like, Hey, you guys need a place to train. <laughs> and, uh, and I trained with them. So my wrestling is looking really sharp. It's, something that I, I slept on in the past because like, oh, I'm a wrestler. I'm good. I'll win this. But like, you got to keep the blade sharp. So I've trained with a lot of really, really good wrestlers this camp and I'm very confident. Max. Hi, Nick. You've been in a roller coaster. You were retired in 2015. You fought in LFA. You entered Contender Series. And now you're here in Bellator. Do you feel like this is your home now? Yeah, Bellator is the best. I love Bellator. Um, I know that's probably what I'm supposed to say, but I'm just 
so happy with everything they've done for me and the way they treated me and, and how they make me feel that there's really nowhere else I want to fight. Um, I'm with them for the, for the long run till I decide to hang it up for real. I'm, I'm Bellator, hopefully, you know, so, uh, I, I, I really am happy where I am and everything happens for a reason. Connor. Uh, hey, Nick, how are you doing? I'm good. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, you've been in this game for, for a while now. You've always back, you know, bounced back from a loss and have always, you know, kind of risen near the top of whatever pro promotion you've been in. So at 34, does this feel like the start of maybe one more final run at, at a major title? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is definitely, definitely, uh, you know, I'm a little older than a lot of other lightweights, but that time I took off to heal myself and, and fix these injuries and do these things are, was crucial so I feel like I set myself back two and a half years by taking two and a half years off so really it's more like I'm like 31 ish maybe just turned 32 so I don't have as many miles on me as I, I I think you know obviously I have a lot of fights and I've been doing this a long time but uh I definitely know that I can hang with the best guys in the world I've I've done it in practice I've, I've trained with these guys that are world ranked and and champions and and I I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think that it was a possibility that I could compete with them Thanks, Nick. Jay Anderson. Hey, Nick. Uh, welcome back. Uh, I just wanted to follow up on something. You kind of touched on it, really, with uh, taking time off after your last fight and uh, running your own gym. But, you know, with all this time off, one of the factors is if, if you don't fight, you don't get paid. And that seems like a lot of added pressure as a small business owner as well in the pandemic. What has this experience been like for you? Uh you know, it sucks that I, I, I couldn't operate my business for so long. Um, a lot of my students came through and, and I had some incentives and some gear packages and private lessons and stuff that people bought. And my students are really like ride or die. You know, I, I don't teach all the classes, but um, the my staff is amazing and, and very knowledgeable. And, and we're back in business now. Obviously, we have some guidelines we have to follow. Um, for the everyday people and we're doing that and and you know I'm making the best out of out of the situation for sure especially I um when this all started we had my wife just barely found out that she was pregnant so we had my second son uh in July and we've been adapting to that and doing those things and luckily she wasn't out of employment she's a speech pathologist so she's been able to uh, do all her calls on zoom and she kind of held us up a little bit along with my uh, loyal students let's get to hear also bellator paid me for that fight too that's awesome to hear they and, paid me uh, my whole purse for that fight so it's like it's like i got paid so it kind of actually went a long way to hold me over and and support my family and we uh we got a minivan from it which is kind of dope that's fantastic to hear. Just another one for me. Um, in terms of the teaching, do you feel that that being a teacher, that being an instructor in the gym has made you a better fighter? Yeah, it does make you better. I actually wasn't really teaching this camp at all. Um, one of my other instructors, Roger Denton, really stepped up and, and he's been in the game for a very, very long time. And he took over a lot of the classes, very knowledgeable guy and helped out. And then along with my other coaches, uh, Jeremy Lebeshevsky and Scott Labrie, um, over in Springfield, Mass., I kind of was able to make something work um, between that and then with everything, conditioning and, and strength training and all that stuff. I have, a, I have such a good team. Our last question here comes from the line of Ben Keeley. Go ahead, Ben. Hi, Nick. Um, one of my favorite things about going on social media these days is when I see someone who reaches out to you and maybe they have a congenital uh, amputation as well, and they just say how they are inspired by you to like, to, you know, achieve all they can and be who they can be and like not be set by limitations. I'm just wondering if, is that the best part of the job? And did you ever imagine you could have been in such a position to inspire so many people? Uh, you know, I, I, when I was a kid, the internet wasn't around like that. And there was only one person I'd ever seen in my whole life with one hand. And his name was Jim Abbott. And I had a pleasure of meeting him twice when I was a kid. And I remember what kind of impact that had on me as a child um, and how it strengthened me and empowered me. 
So I brought that same, I try to bring that same energy that he brought me to people that meet me that might find the same thing in me. I didn't start off to prove anything or be anything or try to be some inspirational person. I just am a human being first. I'm my own person. I'm, I'm Nick Newell before I'm this one handed guy before I'm anything other than myself. And I don't, it's not, it's not who I am. The one handed fighter is not who I am. It's just a part of who I am. And it's something that I've accepted and something I'm comfortable with. And I always try to make myself available for people that might not be as comfortable with the way they're born or how they feel. So, um, yeah. And I actually got to meet Jim and talk to him multiple times. And, and we kind of have a lot of the same outlooks on some things in regards to, um, being born with one hand and, and handling life. So he's definitely still a role model to me after all these years. So if I could do something like that, um, for someone else, that's, that's amazing. And, and there's a whole crop of other one handed fighters out there that are, that are on the come up, man. I, uh, you know, I have this one kid from Brazil that sends me messages every single day. I had, there's a guy in, in lion fight, named Jake Peacock, who's an absolute savage. He's one of the best Muay Thai fighters in the world. And he's young. I think he's only like 22. So um, I, I might be the first MMA, big MMA guy, but I wasn't the first one-handed guy out here doing combat sports. You know, there was Baxter Humby, Gene Jocks Machado. And uh, and after me, there'll be guys like Jake Peacock. And, and, uh, and I'm just here being myself and doing my thing. I hope that was a good enough answer. I kind of dragged on a little bit, but... Uh, it's definitely something that is, is very interesting to me. No, that's great. Thanks for the time, Nick. Appreciate it. Good luck the rest of the week.